First of all, David, tell us why you finally decided to say goodbye to Doctor Who. Well, I think when I, when I first started back in 2005, I always thought that if it worked out, three years would be about the right time, the right amount of time to do three years, three series, um, which I did and I loved and I had a great time. And then, then there was the possibility of doing a few more, doing a few specials, which will see us through next year. So that was sort of too hard to turn down, really. Um, and then, you know, I just had to start thinking about was this the right time to move on? And Russell T. Davis is, is leaving and Julie Gardner, the executive producer, are leaving. And my, my connection to the show had always been very linked to them. We did Casanova together, which um, was a BBC drama that really led to me doing Doctor Who. So it, that became a kind of natural stepping off point for me. Um, what, be what became very difficult is then when it was announced that Stephen Moffat was, was taking over. Uh, as the showrunner on Doctor Who because I'm such a fan of his, he's such a great writer, he's written such amazing stories for me um, in Doctor Who already, um, that the prospect of hanging around for a while and, and uh, enjoying working with him on it was was sorely tempting and very nearly changed my mind again. But I thought, no, hang on, this is what I always, this is what I always thought I would do, this this feels about right. Um, and and the show's doing well and, and, and people seem to like it and I think it's better to uh, better to go when there's a chance that people might miss you than to hang around and outstay your welcome, I think. So what's your message to fans about all this? Well, do you know, I remember when I, when I was a kid and, and I loved Doctor Who and grew up with it, for me, the most exciting time was when the Doctor changed, you know, because suddenly this hero who can never die, you know he's going to die, you know he's on his way out, you know something terrible is going to happen, it's very exciting, and then you've got this whole new character to look forward to and wonder about and it's it's very exciting and it's part of what makes Doctor Who so great the fact that it can renew itself and that that that, that it kind of lives off that rejuvenation both in story terms and, and in terms of the program itself so um I think it's exciting I'm excited as a viewer to see what happens next has Russell T Davis given you any hints about your exit or any final lines you might be saying no, he hasn't. I do not know what he's thinking about. I don't even know what, what we're doing for the, the first special yet. Um, so uh, I, I, I hope he's thinking about it long and hard, but I don't know what it's going to be. But Russell being Russell, it will be, I'm sure it will be a send off to be proud. What are your memories of the last three and a half years of Doctor Who? Oh, it's been the most extraordinary time. It's been a, a, a bewildering, life changing uh, time. Very exciting and just so much fun. It's such a great show to work on. Um, and again, I think that's one of the reasons I think it's, it's right to take a sort of deep breath and, and bow out when it's still fun, when it's a novelty, when it still feels like something. It, it needs, I think Doctor Who needs an energy and an enthusiasm. Um, and I think to serve it properly, that's, you, you've, got to be, you, you've got to be full of excitement about it, which I still am. And I, I, don't, want to, I don't want it ever to feel like a job. So I want, you know, I want to move on when it still feels exciting and new and fresh. And, and uh, that, that means I'll miss it. You know, I'm not, you know in, in, in some ways I could go on forever, really. You know, it, it would be very easy to still be here when I'm 42 and, and uh, people are going, how long is he staying for? So, um, it, 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 you know, it, it's been the most fantastic time working on this show and I, I will have such great memories and um, all the people who work on the show down in Cardiff, the enthusiasm that everyone has for it and the, the the lack of cynicism on set, you know, it's, that's, that's remarkably rare in television and uh, it's been a real pleasure to be involved with. And I'm just, I, you know, I'm, glad, I'm delighted I've got another year to go, you know, I'll be, I'll be eating it up all the more now. When that year's over, what do you think you'll actually miss the most? I think I'll miss the people, all the people who work on the show. Um, I'll, I'll miss Russell's fantastic script and the, of all the other writers who work on it. And I'll miss playing this character, I mean, I don't think there's a better character on television really. Um, he gets to be everything, you know, he gets to be funny and intense and he's a hero but he's also a bit of a clown and he's, he's an anarchist but he's, uh, uh, he's strong and dependable and, and crazy and, and uh, like Mercury one minute and, and like steel the next and, and to get the chance to play all those things, you know, 45 minutes on a Saturday night is, is I'll miss that I'm sure. As an actor, what's it going to be like for you in the future? Do you think you'll always be known as Doctor Who? I think it's one of those parts that does, that does follow you around, yeah. I mean, I know a couple of the, the old Doctors and it's clearly still a part of their life. Um, I, I think it has such a, 
the, the the public has such an enthusiasm for it and 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 uh, such such an intrigue for the show that that I think once once you've been part of it, it does tend to stick to you like glue. But that's fine. It's something I'm very proud to forever be associated with. So I but I but I um no I have no delusions that it won't it it, it won't always be you know, something that I'm referred to as having been involved with. But that's that's fine. Of course, a lot of previous Doctors have made reappearances in the show. Is that something you'd consider in the future? You see, when you're in the show, they're asking you when you'll leave. And as soon as you say you're going, they're asking you when you'll come back. Um, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Like, like I said, I think, you know, everyone who's played this part, it, it, it kind of, it sticks with them. And, and, and the, if the opportunity arises and, and it's the right set of circumstances. But, but, but right now, all I know is that I'm... I'm well, after another year, it's still a year away, um, that it won't be sort of my day-to-day -day existence anymore, which, um, but beyond that, I can't really say at the moment. As you said, ever since you started, people have been asking, when are you going to leave? So is this all a bit of a relief now? Oh, it's funny. I was just, I, I, I was just talking to, um, to Julie Gardner, our executive producer, before I came in here, and I said, it's all a bit real, this. We're going to actually talk about moving on. There's no going back now. Um, so I don't know. I suppose it'll be it'll be it'll be a relief to stop having to field questions about when I'm leaving because um, I've been doing that for the last three and a half years. Um, but I, I don't really know what it's going to feel like until it happens. I suppose um, it's been such a big part of my life. It's one of those. It's it's an all-consuming job, um, and it'll it, it'll feel very different to to move away from it. Do you think you'll ever do anything quite as special as Doctor Who again? It's difficult to know, isn't it? I mean it. I think the cross-generational, cross-cultural appeal of Doctor Who is pretty unique. I can't think of anything else that has fans who are seven and seventy in almost equal measure. Um, and it's it's difficult to think what else one might do that that could rival that. I mean, I hope I'll do things that will be as exciting and as thrilling artistically and 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 uh, professionally, obviously. Um, but I think Doctor Who is pretty unique, um, and. I don't know, maybe, perhaps nothing else will, will rival quite the sort of combination of experiences that it brings, um, which is another reason why I'm very privileged to have been involved at all, really. How has Doctor Who changed your life? It must have had a lot of great positives, but also some negatives. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, the great positive is I get to be in this show that I'm desperately proud of, and I get to work on these great scripts, and I get to play this incredible character. Um, I, I, I suppose, like I was saying, it has a, it has a level of public scrutiny and, and, and attention, which is very flattering and, and uh, uh, kind of thrilling to be in the middle of, but also a bit bewildering. And, and sometimes, you know, it, it, it does make you famous in a way that was never a particular attention of mine. Um, and it's churlish to complain about, but obviously that does bring certain attentions to your life, which you, you might not always choose to have. But that, you know, I knew what I was getting into. That's part of the, that's part of the job. And I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Of course, the huge question is, who would you like to replace you? Well, I've always been a big supporter of Wee Jimmy Cranky, and I, you know, if it wasn't me, it was going to be him, her, him. So uh, I'm the, the campaign starts here for me to get to get Wee Jimmy Cranky in the TARDIS and Big Ian Cranky as the companion. I think that works. Whoever your successor turns out to be, what kind of advice would you give them? Oh, I wouldn't be so pompous as to offer advice. I'm sure they'll sort it out for themselves. Um, just have have fun. It's the best part around. Enjoy it. What's it going to be like for fans, young fans especially, because you are their doctor? What's it going to be like when you go? Well, I guess I suppose if you you know if you were eight when when I took over, you'll be twelve when I leave, which is quite a big time of life, isn't it? Um, but. Like I said, I think I think that's one of the exciting parts about being a fan of the show. You know, um, the, the the fact that that it can change uh, and that the Doctor can change. You know, this the the, the character in the centre of the drama can be a completely different person and and act very different. It's not like James Bond, where you know he's going to be a sort of suave and okay, he might change a bit, but he's he's a certain type of man. Like Tarzan's a certain type of character. Sherlock Holmes, the Doctor can change quite radically. But there's still a, an essential doctorness who I'm sure whoever takes over will find their own way of, of communicating that. And I think, um, you know, when I was a kid, Tom Baker turned into Peter Davison and it was thrilling and, and, and extraordinary and, and 
a little bit disorientating at first, but in a really exciting way. So, um, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm excited for everyone else getting to watch that happen. I think it'll be great. David, you're not leaving immediately, are you? You've already filmed one special with more to come. Tell us about that. Well, we've already shot the, the Christmas special for this year called The Next Doctor, which in the circumstances is perhaps an even more intriguing title than before. Um, so uh, you'll see that this Christmas. Um, that's uh, where we see the 10th Doctor meeting another Doctor. What's all that about? Tune in and find out. And then uh, in January, we'll, we'll film four more specials, um, which will be screened throughout next year. Um, and they'll, they'll be the four last stories that, that I do. But um, uh, we don't quite know when they'll go out, but they'll go out sometime throughout 2009. So um, that will be, we start that in January and, and uh, you'll see them next year. Thanks for talking to us, it's David. It's been a great pleasure. No, Thank you. As ever. Thank you Cheers. very much. What day is this? Christmas Eve, sir. 1851, sir. Nice year. This creature came out of the shadows. A man made of metal. What manner of men are they? Cybermen. Merry Christmas to you too.